Scott. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. Every once in a while, a green building project comes along that shows us the way to the future. T5M Connect is a 16-unit multifamily project that is the poster child for how to increase density and build community. And hey, the icing on the cake is this project was built to the passive house standard and it requires 90% less energy. The project was built by David and Melissa Campbell, who own Homestretch, a small multifamily developer, and they built this project right in their own neighborhood of North Glenora in Edmonton. This is um, a 16 unit, kind of somewhat unique townhome style um, infill project. Um, this was two single family lots. Um, each one had a decrepit 1950s bungalow. Um, you know, one was totally vacant and the other had one inhabitant in it. So a uh, pretty un underutilized site. Uh, well, we know that one of the best ways we can build in order to fight climate change is to increase the density of building in mature neighborhoods like this. We're right in the core, the center of the North Lenora neighborhood, right across the street from the school. So we wanted to increase density, but do it in a way that was integrated and fit well with the neighborhood. Melissa Campbell does public engagement for a living. And before they purchased the second lot, they asked for input from the neighbors in a novel way. Actually, before we'd even purchased the second site, uh, we put up a sign on, the, on this corner, actually right here, um, and just said, what should we build here? Uh, it was just a, you know, a big sign that said, what should we build here? And we had Sharpie markers so that people walking by could write suggestions. And uh, we got some really good suggestions. Some were, you know, like some people didn't take it seriously. Uh, and some of the suggestions did, just didn't make sense. But one of the suggestions was buy the site beside this one and build multifamily housing. And we still don't know who wrote that. Apparently it wasn't David. <laughs> It wasn't. That's the surprising thing. But they also found some concerned neighbors, as you might expect. We actually, um, you know, met with some concerned neighbors just up the street in their backyard. Um, and because we live in this neighborhood, we were able to actually connect with a lot of our community members throughout the whole process. The decision was made to build some very tasteful and diverse multifamily housing. So there were two two homes. Those homes are obviously gone, and in its place there are uh, 16 units. It's a mix of a whole bunch of different types. So we have um, one bedroom uh, apartment styles. We have two and three bedroom townhomes. We have some two bedroom um, apartment style units, and we have some two bedroom uh, wheelchair accessible suites. By coincidence, just as we were doing the interview on the corner outside the building, resident Christy Lear pulled up in her wheelchair. Unit made this possible for me to feel safe and comfortable and be here alone with neighbors, family, friends, Tamara, um, the lady upstairs, I keep forgetting her Cheryl. name because I call her auntie. It's, just, it's amazing. Um, the gentleman across the way when there's things going on where we're not feeling safe, you know, I know he's there. Edmonton's city plan calls for increasing density, but this project happened before changes to the zoning bylaw. Yeah, so this project was rezoned prior to the new zoning bylaw going through in Edmonton. So, um, uh, so we had to go through the whole rezoning process. Uh, so our counselor is Andrew Knack, who is has been very supportive. He's a very engaged counselor. So um, he uh, has been connecting with us throughout the process and actually also connecting with some of the concerned people because he's really good at that the whole rezoning process. Uh, but council um, approved it unanimously when we went to council. So they were in favor of it. Well, it was fully at least before we finished construction, actually. Yeah. And there's a wait list too. So. Studies have shown that the average inner city resident produces about half the greenhouse gas emissions of someone in the suburbs, thanks to location efficiency. The city plan calls for 50% of new housing units to be built through infill. This project checks all the boxes. Next time, we'll take a look at just how innovative these green buildings are. Learn more at greenenergyfutures.ca. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.